How are you guys doing? Josh here with Ohio Fish Rescue. So I just want to bring you guys along the journey that is the craziness of our life here at Ohio Fish Rescue. So with every project comes, you know, a big disaster. So you guys know we had just set up this 700, 500, 1000, and the 2000 right there. Well, do you guys know the plans? These are all coming out of the room. Tomorrow we are moving this tank and stand, this tank and stand, and this tank and stand, along with these smaller tanks below that we were using for quarantine. So this tank has to be moved, them two, this whole big box of parts, there's a big box of media, all this crap underneath here. I gotta move all this stuff out of the aisle way to be able to open that door and get everything out of here. So this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and take a strap, the big trucker straps all the way around the tank to the stand, one there, one there, and then one going long ways. So we can carry the tank and the stand as one. We're gonna do the same thing with this acrylic 500 and the 700 right here. Now you guys might be asking, well, how are you gonna possibly move these tank and stands as one? Well, you see, with uh, enough knowledge, you can go ahead and do this. So when we go ahead and strap these tanks together, they're basically a solid one-piece unit. I probably have 20-plus guys coming. Now, we could probably manage, pick this thing up, and walk it around, but I don't like, walk, uh, I don't like working that hard. So what we're going to do is use PVC pipe like you've seen us do before. We're going to go ahead and wheel it all the way out the door. We're going to wheel it on the cement around. And then we're going to go through the grass. So coming back here, you see I have my 8x5 pond waiting. All of our pond supplies for the massive pond going in right here. But to make this job happen, I had to remove all of my railings to be able to get these tanks on and something else out of our way. So as you can see, we'll be taking the tank straight up through here. And I also took it off there just in case we had to shoot them straight out that way. Well, we come in here. These tanks are going against this back wall here. So these are the Bellagio stands. We will be taking both of these stands out of this room. There's stand one, there's stand two. So uh, I have my buddy Stephen Conroe from SC Aquatics coming up. He's going to work on cutting down the stands and re-welding them up while we are moving the, the tanks in and out. So first things first, we have to get these stands out and into the driveway. Stephen can start working. And uh, then we can start working on stand number two while, of course, Steven's working. He's going to try and get both of these stands done by Sunday evening, which I don't know if he's going to have an enough time. He's pretty confident, but there is a lot of work going into these stands. Of course, that'll be another video in itself. So uh, stay tuned for, for the ride, guys. But if you see, see behind here, we picked up a few more uh, plants. There's a few fake ones in there. But my dad's buddy dropped off this, uh, I believe it's a Dracaena. And then of course we've got the bird of paradise. It's starting to look like a jungle in here. It's pretty awesome. But as I was saying, that uh, 1,000, 500, and the 700 are going to go right against this wall right here where this one stand is. All three of them tanks equal 20 foot, which is the length of one of these stands. But what makes this better is these stands could only go against the, these uh, columns right here. The tanks now can slide back when they can, so we'll have just a tad bit more room in this aisleway. Now over here, we'll be able to put this couch uh, living room area back against the wall and make it more enjoyable for everyone out here to enjoy the, the pond. I uh, had this sitting on top to Bellagio stands. This is a five foot wall fish tank, which I'll probably be uh, right, raffling off or doing some sort of giveaway with it. I don't really have, have the time or the use for it, so I'm going to let one of our lucky viewers own this tank. Just got to have the time to be able to do it. So while all this commotion is going on, what you guys don't know is my roofers will be here in three days to replace the roof on this whole 
uh, monster pond area as well as the rest of the, the house. So we've got work happening inside, outside, fish rescue, personal life, and it's just one hectic just commotion going on 24-7. So we're trying to get whatever we can done whenever. So I hope you, you guys enjoy our, our drive and our push to get all this th things done. But once this is done, I swear, OFR is going to be spectacular. So back in the fish room, as I said, the Bellagio tanks are going to be going against this whole entire wall. Well, uh, you're probably thinking, if you're moving them three tanks out, there's this one big 2,000 gallon that's still going to be in the way. Yes, this is true. But as some of you might know who watched the Stay Fishy Friday, and those of you who don't, you can find out now. We actually sold this tank to Steven from SC Aquatics. He's actually coming to work off some of the cost of the tank, helping us do the, the stands. I gave him a killer of a deal on the, the, the tank, basically all the money that I paid for it. And I'm just basically getting that back out of it minus a, a few dollars because he helps the rescue so much. So th this is a 16 by four foot with a coast to coast overflow in it. it. It is a plywood build, but as you can see, the corners are all fiberglass. This whole uh, back wall and side walls are fiberglass. Now, I told him there, what I would do with the tank, what I was planning on doing, I was going to build a new brace across the, to this front to try and beef this up and do some more center bracing. So that's why I gave him a killer of a deal on the tank. Plus he helps us all the time. So we are going to have to move this beast out of the room, which will not be tomorrow. So this will leave me enough room right here to get one of the Bellagio stands in. That would be 20 foot there. Then we have another 16 foot here, two foot on that end, and then we have five foot over here. So to make this work, what I'm having to do is this 550 gallon quarantine tank right here is basically going to have to turn a, uh, 90 degrees, excuse me, almost said 180. So we're going to go from this wall straight to right here. And then we're going to basically take Pittsburgh's cube. We're going to slide it over and go bam, straight back against the, the wall. So the, the same tanks, but what this does is it opens up this whole area for the Bellagio tanks to go in there. And there's going to basically be a dead spot in this back corner that we basically won't use. We can use it for storage and stuff, but you're basically going to have the Bellagio down this whole entire wall, which is pretty awesome. But looking over here at uh, some of the new rescues. Here we have these albino Paku. All these fish in this tank came all the way from the great state of New York. Uh, the, this gentleman came and dropped off his fish, these two albino paku, that tiger shovel nose back there. We have this uh, red tail cat, which I am convinced is a short body because he's just super wide and not, not as long as he could be, but super hard to tell. But his name is Mike Lowry. Just like uh, from the movie Bad Boys. This was one of his fit, the favorite fish. So uh, we went ahead and took these guys in. And there's also a channel cat, which is hiding back there behind the Paku. Um, but we got them five fish just a few days ago. So we are still running everything at the rescue. These were just some new arrivals that you guys have not seen yet. So I thought you guys would enjoy. So tonight, before all the commotion happens tomorrow, I have to drain this tank, move these fish to a different uh, tank or a holding tank. We've got this big Adonis Pleco, this super nice high shine arrow right there, and we've got uh, these four bass, which we're going to move to a different tank because this has to be drained for tomorrow. Same thing with this. You guys have probably been asking why it's all only drained to about a foot. I kept it that way so I can just have a few fish in there, but we were taking it down. I got to drain it the rest of the way tonight so these three tanks can be good to go in the morning and we can just hit the ground running. 
So here we are after the live stream, the work never stops. I am now draining out this 700 gallon, bringing it down low, low enough to where I can go ahead and acclimate these guys to my other water. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in that 550 for right now. And then we gotta drain this tank out, have it dry to be able to move tomorrow. We've got my cousin Junior, which I haven't seen in I don't know how long. He was probably about half bit the size last time I seen him. But turns out he, he likes fish. So he's here helping me drain this out. And we're gonna be moving fish here pretty soon. Then we gotta drain this 500. And then we will be good to go for tomorrow's commotion. So here we are, one man wrecking team. I am uh, filming. I am also catching fish. Here we go, we've got a mono peacock bass that we are gonna go ahead and move over to the pond because these fish have been through quarantine fit, uh, long enough. We're gonna go ahead and put them in the stingray pond for right now. Here we go, bud. There you go. You got a nice new big home until we get the bass tank set up and you're with a bunch of bass friends. We've got the Azuls and the Calberries and the Thames. These guys will all be together eventually unless they get too big. Then they're going to be out in the monster pond. So here we have it. I had the bass in the net. The bass jumped out and the arowana jumped in. Look at this. Ah. You know, Greg always says he loves his job, but I think I love my job more. <laughs> there we have it. There goes the high shine, or he called it a platinum. I called it a, a very high grade high shine. He is now in the, the pond. He's going to enjoy his life, but he will eventually make it over here to the 4,400 gallon aquarium. Here we go. Oh, there goes the last bass. Sorry guys, I'm on uh, net in one hand, film guy in the other hand. I'm trying to make do, but we've got all the bass and we've got the arowana. Now the only thing left to move is the Adonis Pleco. <laughs> so we are now getting out this huge 34 inch Adonis Pleco. He's going to be a pain, because you know he doesn't want to leave. Oh, ho, ho. oh, come on, buddy. Oh, here we go. God, you are one heavy fish. You know when you got to reach in there and grab the net to get the fish out of the tank? He's a heavy fish. <laughs> So here we go, we've got the Adonis Pleco now back in the 3000. He was in here before, but he was being out competed for food. So uh, we took him out, but he will be fine in here until we get him his tank set up back in the monster pond room. So this, this boy will be sitting in here until we get all the work done in here and we get them tanks set up against that wall, which you guys will be seeing in the next few videos. Would you look at that, right as I went to go cut the video off, the pond lights turned on. This is just an awesome monster pond. And of course, we've added a bunch more fish in here. We've added the arowana, the channel cat. We've added in tiger shovel nose. We've added in iridescent sharks and uh, a few more actually. So there's been uh, stock being added to this pond and you guys don't even know about it. You guys have been yelling at us about this pond's understocked, but we're doing it on our own time, okay, guys? Just ha have some faith. We do always what's right, and th this is our show here. So uh, we make sure the fish's safety are first. So now there is uh, four iridescent sharks in here and one perun shark, soon to be a lot more. So with everything being done tonight, the tanks are prepped, the filters are off, I moved the FX5 over to here. You can see he's now purging out the air, it just went off on its two minute cycle to get the rest of the air out because I moved the intake out. So now this tank's good to go, the rest of the three are good to go. I started removing all of the boxes out from underneath the stands. So you guys are going to have to join us in the next video to see how this progresses, what happens, where everything goes. 
I appreciate you guys for watching. If you guys want to see more crazy adventures with the Ohio Fish Rescue, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay fishy, my friends.